In this video, we're going to look at uh, types of neutralization reactions. And um, a neutralization reaction is where you have an acid and a base come together, and you can have two possible outcomes. One outcome could be the formation of a weak or non-electrolyte, so this would be making water or a weak acid or base. And then the other outcome is where you can make a gas, so we call those gas-forming reactions. So let's start with the first one, which is the formation of a weak electrolyte or water. So the classic example would be combining a strong acid and a strong base together. So for example, you have KOH aqueous plus HCl aqueous gives our, our products. So now the question is, is, how do you predict the products? Well, we're going to follow the same steps that we do for any metathesis reaction. We're going to exchange the partners and we're going to look for, um, we're going to look for a weak electrolyte or water, or we're gonna look for a gas. Now the gas is gonna come down the road, but right, so right now we're looking for a weak electrolyte or water. So KOH and HCl, when they combine, we're gonna exchange partners. So we're gonna take the H and move it over to the OH minus. So we get H2O. And the other one is gonna give us a K plus Cl is gonna give us KCl. Uh, so from solubility rules, we know that that's aqueous and our water is going to be a liquid that's a non-electrolyte. So in this case, we formed water, which is definitely a non-electrolyte. We've taken ions out of solution. We've gone from four ions to just two ions on the product side. So that's what I mean by the formation of a weak electrolyte or water. So th this classic reaction, we can, we can look at this in terms of acid-base chemistry from uh, Bronsted, the Bronsted-Lowry picture. What's basically happening is, is we have our acidic proton, and it's going over to and reacting with the base, which in this case is, case is hydroxide, and so we make water and a salt. That's the classic neutralization reaction. Now, if you wanted to write this out in terms of a net ionic equation, what we could do is we would write, uh, we have K plus aqueous, so we write our complete first, OH minus aqueous plus H plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous, and then this would give us uh, H2O liquid. And remember, weak electrolytes and water we don't break up because they don't ionize um, in solution completely. And we have on the other side, we have K plus aqueous and Cl minus aqueous. So if we want to eliminate our um, spectator ions, we would get rid of the chloride and the potassium. So we get OH minus aqueous plus H plus aqueous gives H2O liquid. And so this is the classic uh, neutralization reaction uh, forming water from a strong acid or a strong base. Okay, so let's look at the case where we have a weak, ac a weak acid reacting with a base. So in this case, we have acetic acid, which is a CH3COOH aqueous. And I write acetic acid this way because it shows that the where the acidic proton is. But you could also write acetic acid as C2H3O2H, or um, some people also write it like this, H c 2 h 3 o 2 And then you know that this proton is the acidic proton. Honestly, I don't really care how you write acetic acid, as long as you have the right number of carbon, hydrogens, and oxygens, and that you denote the acidic proton as being on the end somewhere. That, to me, is, the, is, is going to get you full credit on the exam. So we would add to this a strong base like sodium hydroxide. And now we're going to predict the products. So just like any other... Um, any other metathesis reaction, we're gonna follow our steps. And the steps are the same for an acid-base reaction as they are for a precipitation reaction. So if you remember back to precipitation reactions, the first step was to exchange the ion partners and then you look for something that's not soluble. So once you've decided that uh, your products are all soluble, then the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna check for a weak electrolyte. In this case, we exchange our ion partners, so we're gonna get um, our H from the acidic proton is gonna go with H with OH minus from the hydroxide, so we get H2O liquid. And our Na is gonna link up with the acetate, so we're gonna get NaCH3COO aqueous. And I know that it's aqueous because all acetate salts and all sodium salts are aqueous from our solubility rules. 
Now, here comes something interesting. How do we handle working with this in the uh, complete and net ionic? So when you look at this, when, we, when we're deciding what we're going to break up, uh, we, have to, we, we only break up strong electrolytes. So in this case, acetic acid is a weak electrolyte. It's not on the list of strong acids. So therefore, it's a weak electrolyte and we don't break it up. The same thing goes for water. This is a weak or non-electrolyte, so we don't break it up. So in the complete ionic, we're going to have CH3COOH aqueous. And then we break up sodium hydroxide because that's on our list of strong bases. Uh, H2O we do not break up. We leave that as a liquid. And then we break up the acetate salt because it's soluble. So now we can get rid of our spectator ions. And it turns out that there's only one. So our net ionic equation in this case is CH3COOH aqueous plus OH minus aqueous gives H2O liquid plus the acetate anion. And again, you have to be cognizant of weak electrolytes versus strong electrolytes. Weak electrolytes do not get broken up in the complete, and therefore they will probably not get eliminated as spectator ions. So let's look at another example of this. And this is an interesting one because this is the most common, one, this is one of the most common metathesis reaction mistakes that students make. So let's take the example of sodium acetate plus HCl aqueous, and let's predict our products. So again, with all metathesis reactions, we're going to exchange our ion pairs. So we're going to put Na with Cl, and that's soluble, so that gets an aqueous. And we're going to put the H with the acetic acid. Oops, let me write that the way that I write it. That's going to be CH3COOH. Okay, so um, we've exchanged our ion pairs, and now we have to decide, did a reaction happen? And a lot of students are going to tell me, no, Dr. K, a reaction doesn't happen because everything is, is soluble on the other side, and therefore no reaction happens. Well, let's actually write out the net ionic equation and see if that's actually true. So in terms of, in terms of our complete, uh, sodium acetate is soluble. It's a soluble salt because both sodium salts and acetate salts are, are soluble. So we're going to write Na plus aqueous plus CH3 COO minus aqueous. And then we're going to add to that HCl. So we're going to decide, does HCl break up? It does because it's a strong acid. So this is going to give us H plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous. We decide if sodium chloride breaks up. It does because it's a soluble salt. And now finally, we come to the acetic acid. And in this case, this is where students are going to make the mistake. They're going to break up acetic acid. You do not break up acetic acid because this is a weak electrolyte. It's a weak acid. So this all stays together. And so when you go to eliminate your spectator ions, the Na plus is going to go away. Uh, and the Cl minus is going to go away. But you are going to wind up with CH3COO minus aqueous plus H plus gives acetic acid CH3COOH. You are in fact forming a weak electrolyte. This is a weak acid. So a reaction did take place in this case, and you have to be cognizant of that. Now that we've gone through the theory of neutralization reactions, we're now gonna take a look at some examples. So in the first one we have magnesium hydroxide plus nitric acid gives uh, question mark products, we don't know. So what we're going to do in this case is we're going to exchange, exchange ion partners. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to pop in our charges. So we have magnesium 2 plus. I know that because it's an alkali earth metal. Uh, the hydroxide, I know that's a minus 1 because I've memorized my polyatomic ions. The same thing with nitrate. Uh, it's a minus 1 and I memorized it. So that makes the H a plus 1. So when we exchange ion pairs, we're going to take the magnesium and we're going to put it with the nitrate. And because I have uh, a plus two charge, I have to put two nitrates on the, the right. So I put it in parentheses and put a two. And from solubility rules, I know that that's soluble because all nitrates are soluble. And then I put my, uh, my proton with the uh, hydroxide and that's going to give me water, H2O liquid. 
Now I have to make sure I balance this, so I have to put a two here and a two here to make sure that everything balance. So if you didn't see that, make go you know go ahead and balance it. But the way to kind of see it is you need you know you have two hydroxides, so you're going to need two protons to make two waters. Now this is an interesting one. We'll write out the complete ionic and then we'll write out the net ionic just so that I can show you something kind of interesting with this one. So uh, we break up the magnesium hydroxide because it's a soluble um, hydroxide. It's one of the exceptions. So we have magnesium 2 plus aqueous plus 2 OH minus aqueous. And then we add to that 2 H plus aqueous plus 2 NO3 minus aqueous. And I break that up because um, uh, nitric acid is a strong acid. We have magnesium 2 plus on the right side over here, aqueous plus uh, 2 NO3 minus aqueous plus 2 H2O liquid. Now, uh, we're going to get rid of our spectators, so that's going to be magnesium and uh, nitrate. Those are going to go away. So that leaves us with 2 OH minus plus 2 H plus aqueous gives 2 H2O. And this is one the one thing I wanted to show you. So you might be tempted to leave those twos in there, but we don't. Um, we get rid of the twos. And the reason why we get rid of the twos is because, remember, when you write a chemical reaction, it has to be in the lowest integer value on uh, the, the coefficients have to be in their lowest integer value. You can't be able to divide through by anything. So in this case, we can divide through by two to give us one, one, and one. So we, we should write OH minus aqueous plus H plus gives H2O liquid. So we get rid of the twos. Now let's look at the next one. Uh, we have NH3 and we have HCl. So in this case, the NH3 is a molecular compound, that's ammonia, which is a base, and we have HCl. So we're going to do our partner exchange. Now what's interesting about this one is NH3 really doesn't have any partner to exchange. It's just a molecule. It, it doesn't have a counter ion to it. So in this case, the H is going to go over to the NH3. So what we're going to get is we're going to get NH4 plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous as our product. And actually, you can summarize this as NH4Cl. This becomes a salt in and of itself. So we are making a salt as our product. So now if you want to do the net ionic, so our correct product here is NH4Cl aqueous. So if we want to do our net ionic, we can start to break things up. So NH3 aqueous, this is a, um, a molecular compound. It's not a strong acid or a strong base, so it stays as is. Then we have H plus H plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous. And then this gives NH4 plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous. So we can get rid of our spectator. And what we're left with is NH3 aqueous plus H plus aqueous gives NH4 plus aqueous as our net. Now, um, just because we're running out of room, I'm going to grab a fresh slide for the, the last one. So we'll look at this one on a clean slide. So we have NAF aqueous plus HClO4 aqueous. Okay, so with this one, um, we're going to do our ion, ex ion pair exchange. So we're going to wind up with HF aqueous, and we're going to wind up with NaClO4 aqueous. Now, the reason why I know that NaClO4 is uh, aqueous is because that's a soluble salt. And HF is, is a weak acid. So in this case, we can identify this as a weak electrolyte, and that's going to be helpful to us as we write our um, net ionic and our complete ionic. So uh, NaF is going to get broken up in the complete because it is a soluble salt. HClO4, perchloric acid, is going to get broken up because it is a strong acid. Now HF does not get broken up because it's an acid but is not on our list of strong acids. And NaClO4 is a soluble salt, so it does get broken up. 
So this is another one of those examples where people will make the mistake and tell me, oh, nope, Dr. K, it doesn't, it's, it doesn't have a reaction when it really does. So the Na is going to go away. The ClO4- minus is going to go away. So we're going to get F- minus aqueous plus H- plus aqueous gives HF aqueous as our net ionic. So those are three examples um, of the neutralization reactions. In the next video, we're going to extend this, these reactions, these neutralization reactions to gas forming reactions. And they're a, kind of a whole different class in and of themselves. So we're going to dedicate a whole video to those.